Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. In my last video, I talked about negative resistance at the input of your power supply. And in this video, I want to talk about undervoltage lockout. And I want to demonstrate how that works. Uh, that is one of the things that we use to kind of protect against that negative input resistance. So that we don't draw too much power at the input and damage things. In the last video, I used this... Uh, this boost converter for demonstration and I've got another boost converter here uh, for demonstration today. I'm going to start with that one. I'm going to put this guy back in. We're going to compare the two and how they operate. And so basically what we're doing with under voltage lockout is we're just keeping the power supply from turning on too soon uh, at too low of a voltage that's going to draw too much current. And you know, the lower the voltage is, the more current it takes. Not like a resistor, it's kind of the opposite, kind of a negative resistor. So, and the reason why is that it's trying to maintain a certain power at the output. And so to maintain that, as the voltage drops, it has to draw more current, okay? So that's basically, in a nutshell, last video. <laughs> uh, so in this one, we're gonna demonstrate how we turn on. So we got the voltage here and time here. I'm gonna crank up the voltage and we're gonna see when it turns on. It'll be at some voltage value that it'll turn on, and then as it turns on, it'll draw a current, and there'll be some voltage dip at the input, most likely, just because of the components, even the connectivity, the copper traces and wires, things like that. Even if it's a small dropout, you don't want to sit there and go on and off and sit there and bounce back and forth along this line, never turn on. So they build in some hysteresis, uh, a difference between the input turning on and the input turning off. So it has to drop down this level. We're going to find out what these two levels are on these two boost converters. We're going to test that real quick here. And this is part of our switch mode power supply series. Okay, and it's a basic concept. It's the under voltage lockout. And this is something you find in data sheets. If you don't see it in the data sheet, you might want to look for another converter chip that has that built in because it is a, a common, pretty much a common thing these days. And okay. Our setup will be the same as in the last video. We're going to use the Harrison, uh, the old HP power supply for input power. And the input power comes in through the Habble test to look at current. And it goes through here and into the input. The negative one just comes right around. And we're going to monitor the input right at the terminals with this Fluke 27, which, by the way, I'm giving away on Father's Day to a Patreon. And, uh, you know, you can be <laughs> and you become a Patreon for as low as a dollar a month. That's my little pitch there. Okay, and then the AMP probe uh, is going to monitor the voltage here. Well, actually up here at the load, the Kunkin load. And the output's right here, it comes up here, and we're gonna monitor it right here at the load. That meter wants to turn off. It's gonna time out on me. This is probably getting ready to as well. I've done reviews on all these meters, and by the way, the insides of this guy is, are, is really impressive. It's everything you think a fluke would be made of and more. I mean, it's just crazy because it was built double tough. This amp probe is also super tough. It's uh, they're both owned. By the way, fluke and amp probe are both owned by the same company, Danaher. All right, guys, let's do the test. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna drop the voltage here. We're gonna just now. I think the output. I think it's set for 20 volts. They're both adjustable. Both these converters. I think we're gonna do the same thing. 20 volts. All right, guys, we're going to start bringing up the uh, supply here. And you know, if you're watching, we got one amp at the load, by the way, and it's 20 volts. It's like we're going to be up at 20 volts pretty soon. Right now we're at three. Uh, and as soon as you see this guy boost up, you know it's turned on. So let's see where that point is. I'm going to go kind of fast and we'll drop back down because... Let's see, I don't know how high it is. Okay, right there. So let's go back down and... Okay, now we're going to creep up. We're at 8.9, 9 volts. 9, 1, 3, 4. Okay, 9, 5. 9, 8. 9, 9. Okay, 10 volts. At 10 volts, it's kind of where the point was. It's jumped up, and let's... Okay, there we go, regulating. So, if you notice, that meter there did 
drop as it turned on because at 10 volts it turned on but it kind of sagged down a little bit so even though it stayed on uh, this output wasn't regulating super great so now it's regulating so let's drop it down below okay we're down below 10 9.9 .9, still on 9.8 oh okay we're at 9.6 okay it dropped out so let's see where that was again let's turn it back on I'll go down 9.7 then we'll go slow yeah I'd say it's right around 9 just on, below 9.7 so maybe 9.6 uh, and then once it turns off it bounces up to 9.8 but it doesn't turn back on so hysteresis works both ways when it turns off when your voltage bounces back up you don't turn back on and then turn off on and off as you turn off too that's a good point uh, to make as well so as you turn on you don't have that hiccup mode where you turn on and off um, and also when you're turning off it turns off clean so and that's all to protect all the FETs and everything on the input your input uh, your EMI filter even your capacitors for that matter you're gonna have ripple current and as the voltage drops you're gonna have more ripple current so it protects all these components uh, you know for under voltage so under voltage lockout there you go okay now let's do the same test on this other boost converter. All right, I've got the other boost converter in here and this is the one we just tested. And incidentally, I'll do a review on each one of these boost converters. They're both really cool, but let's just look at this guy. Now, watching the input voltage and then when we see the output jump up, we will know that it's turned on. And it's gonna be up around eight, I think. So let's get up there. Okay, right there, starting to draw a current. It's trying to turn on, but I mean, it's drawing 1.4 amps. It's really pulling. It's about 8.5. Oh, and there it finally let go. See, if you notice, that current peaked out pretty high before it finally turned on. Let's just drop down a touch here. I'm going to turn on the max. And let's just see how high that maxed out as we tried to turn it on. We got three amps and it turns on it jumped up to 5.3 amps and then you notice how it turns amber after it's over an amp kind of safety warning so Apple test has a nice little safety feature there so we're up to 20 volts now we're running okay now let's see where we turn off that was around eight and a half where it tried to turn on right okay we're at eight and a half now okay let's take this back into action whoops Okay. Okay, it's turned off. So 8.2, I think it was. Here, I'll take it up fast. See, if I take it up fast, I can ramp through that high current stage. But here, let's take it back down. 8.4, 8.3, eight 8.2, right below 8.2. Yep. Yeah. Oh, no, it's still up. Okay, now it's finally dropped out. So it dropped out okay, but coming up. It had a harder time uh, crossing that transition. I think the under voltage lockout's not set high enough. Okay, now something else I did kind of trick you. I set the load instead of one amp, I put a 0 0.3 amps because you see how high that current went. Let's go to one amp now on this guy. Okay, there's one amp, everything's working fine. Well, it's not boosting yet. Let's try to make a boost. Okay, eight, four, eight, five, it's gonna try. Look how that current's drawing. It's gonna blow up on me, six amps, yikes. Okay, it finally, look, it took nine volts. I was really pulling the power supply trying to get it up, but it finally went on. So that under voltage lockout should be probably closer to nine volts so that it doesn't do this. Um, now watch, if I pulled on faster, it'll, probably turn on a lot easier but let's see what the max current is i'm going to just try to spin the dial fairly quick okay it only peaked out at 1.8 amps much better so you see what i'm getting to is if the voltage ever ramps up slow uh, it's gonna not work as well the way this one's set up so 
you got to be careful on that intervals lockout. Other than that, this power supply, and you know what? As I've tested this thing, even though it draws a lot of current and does that, it seems to be able to handle it. It hasn't blown up yet. <laughs> and I've, you know, I've been testing this for a little while uh, under different situations and pulled, you know, like you saw, some current there. So, all right. An example of an undervoltage lockout that's probably not set quite right, but pretty close. But you see how it can lock up. Okay. Now, if I set this current just a little bit higher, you want to try to do that? Now, you also have to consider this. As the power supply as the converter kicks on, it's a boost converter is going to the output's going to be about a diode drop less than the input. So it is charging those output capacitors, which helps the converter. But when it tries to jump, it's drawing some current there. Uh, when it tries to jump up to, you know, to whatever boost regulated voltage it is, then what happens is it tries to charge those caps real quick too from that new voltage. So you got an inrush to the capacitors plus the load. And when you have a constant current load, so you could have other converters running off of this converter, which would be constant power. They're going to want to provide their regulated output. So they're going to have this kind of, they're going to create this kind of situation where it's drawing constant power. And audio amplifier is going to try to maintain a certain power on the output. Same kind of thing. Uh, okay, now let's take this up. We got two amps at the output. It's going to try to boost to 20 volts. Let's see what happens. Okay, we're at 9 volts and it has not boosted yet. We're up at 3 amps. Okay, we're at 10. Oh, you know what happened? Okay, so that is a cool feature of this power supply. This power supply also has a current limit set. And you can set that up and it hit that current limit set and once it does that uh, it basically stops boosting it just allows current to flow but it gives you a, a little amber light that says I've tripped I'm out of here it doesn't know if the problem's still there so it doesn't even try to hiccup and restart it just drops out Alright guys, hey, if you haven't uh, subscribed yet, please do so and give the video a thumbs up. That helps a lot with the YouTube analytics and all that. Really appreciate that. And hope this was valuable and it is a basic concept and so we just kind of attack this all by itself. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time.